What are the best things to eat before, during and after a trail race or ultra? I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Films and last month I was at the Pikes Peak Marathon in Colorado interviewing some of the world's best mountain athletes about their race nutrition strategies, <coughs> including race winner Dakota Jones, sky running champion Emily Forsberg and coaches Max King and Sage Canada. Also in this film, find out which food Emily really didn't like. Oh, no. And I meet two regular American racers who blew my mind with their food choices. I still don't really know if they're joking or not, so if you do, then please let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already and don't miss out on my next film. I'm going to be live at the Ring of Steel Sky Race this Saturday, 15th of September. It's the fifth in the Golden Trail series before the grand finale. So I'll be chatting to the world's best mountain runners like Killian Jornet and Mark Lornstein, Ruth Croft, Laura Orge and Collie Page. Look out for the timings on my social media and join me if you can. In the meantime, enjoy this film and I'll see you on the trails. The night before race, it's kind of whatever works for you. Um, I like a lighter meal, a good amount of carbohydrates, a little bit of protein, a little bit of fat too, um, but something light, something healthy, um, and something that you've done prior to another race that you've, the, where you've tried that out. Uh, and just keeping it nice and light. What's your favorite dish? Ooh, I don't know, that's, that's so hard to say. Uh, it's kind of whatever's available at the time. I'm not picky. Um, and I don't have a particular thing that I do before every race. Uh, I just, I find that to be pretty rigid and um, I need to be more flexible. When you're traveling around the world and stuff, you have to be flexible. You never know what you're gonna get. Um, and so, you know, honestly, like just an, a nice dish of pasta with a, you know, with chicken or beef or something like that with some vegetables is kind of a nice dish that um, works really well. So it's not that I change a lot my, my nutrition the day before the race but maybe I eat a little bit more carbohydrates that, than usually but uh, I used to eat like some rice for example, some eggs and vegetables and that's all. I like pasta the night before, um, very pretty carb based but still whole foods carb based so I'm actually a plant based vegan uh, so I eat a lot of pasta, beans and rice, things like that. I won't eat a ton, I'll eat a salad too, a lot of fruit and vegetables. Uh, but yeah, I'm generally, you know, sweet potatoes are great, rice, uh, pasta, things that you're used to though, you want to be comfortable. I eat a super early dinner the night before a race too, to make sure I could go to the bathroom in the morning before the start, uh, early morning start. So, and definitely stay hydrated as well, that's the other key component. In the days going into the race, not just a couple hours before the race, but even the days leading up, you want to make sure your blood volume is pretty high. So stay hydrated, not just with water, but electrolyte fluid as well. And uh, yeah, I, I indulge in beer and desserts and sweet treats a lot. I like, I have a sweet tooth, but uh, in general, staying away from the really high processed foods and really refined sugar. I won't have a huge cake or pie the night before, but maybe after the race. I definitely recommend uh, cardio and uh, not that many sauces or that not that many uh, things that you haven't proved before. And I think uh, hydration is much, much more important than, than nutrition, definitely, because if, if, even if you are eating a lot of carbs and if you haven't drink that much, um, you're going to feel weak, definitely. Well, before the race, it starts three days in a half and um, the day of the race, I would not drink that much. Otherwise, you have to go to the toilet. <laughs> I don't have like a big routine. I try to be really easy. Um, I think that if you if you stress about this too much, you're going to, it's just, if I stress about anything too much, no matter what I eat, like I'll, if I'm stressed too much, I'll just, will be stressed and then I won't do so well. I'll probably try to eat some rice because I think that that settles your stomach pretty well. I often eat like porridge with berries or fruit or like a smoothie with granola and maybe some sandwiches. Is it not nice? <laughs> oh. But I needed to try it because I never tried a donut before. What? You've never tried a donut before? How is this mm. possible? I don't know. <laughs> and it's first donut experience. Wow. And it wasn't a good one. Oh. But without the this, yeah. it was okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. For my breakfast, um, I usually, for, for a pretty serious race or intense race, um, I'll do um, just a bar. Um, and I use a picky bar. Um, it's something that's from my hometown. Um, they make it there. And so it's just, I, I enjoy that. And it's uh, 200 calories each bar. So I'd usually do one for a shorter race, two for a longer race. 
Um, and then um, it's, it's really easy, it's um, pretty easy to, to digest um, and works really well. Yeah, my favorite breakfast for the for uh, race day is uh, oat. Porridge. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah, have yeah. anything in it like honey or banana or anything? Yeah, it depends. So it's not light fix. It's not my this, every day the same. It depends a little bit, but uh, for sure I will eat oats. Yeah, breakfast. I keep it simple, carb based. I like to eat a lot of waffles, but. Uh, in this case, I'll probably eat, I like some sourdough bread with a little bit of peanut butter on it. So mainly carbohydrate based with some uh, plain coffee as well. A little caffeine boost wakes me up in the morning. Uh, so I have that, it's carb based, uh, not a crazy amount of, of fiber or anything, just enough to keep me light and to give me energy, top off those glycogen stores. And the protein, a little bit of protein and fat from the peanut butter keeps me satiated and not so I'm, I don't want to be starving when I tow the starting line either, but I want to feel light. Uh, easy breakfast, uh, something that in your country is very famous, like porridge or, uh, or fruits or bananas or something like that. During races up to like seven hours, I say I only eat gels because you're running pretty fast anyway. And if it's longer, I start to eat like bars or more sandwich, like more What's food. Your What's your favorite sandwich filling for a long, long race? <laughs> what do you have on the King's Trail? Uh, like almond butter and, and banana. Yeah, so I stick with, uh, with gels. Um, goo is a sponsor of mine, and so I do goo gels. Uh, and usually I start at about 45 minutes to an hour in, um, taking gels every 20 to 30 minutes. Um, usually I'm trying to get 200 to 400 calories an hour for myself, um, usually right around 300 calories an hour. Um, and so that's like three, three gels per hour or so. Uh, so that's what I do. Um, I can do that up to about eight hours of racing or so. Um, and then I start to add in some solid foods like bars or um, anything like from rice to eggs to avocado, something like that. Usually from an aid station, um, from a crew or something if I was doing a longer um, 100K or 100 miler or something like that. I don't have a uh, plan exactly, so, but for sure, so I will eat something like gels, but when I have my own gels, but uh, something like that to have energy to keep all the race. And maybe eat something like, like dates or something like that, like more eatable, not only like drink or, or gels. I'm sponsored by My Spring Energy, and so I've taken a, a gel that I've developed with them called the Canterbury. Uh, it's a fruit-based, rice-based uh, energy type of gel, 100 calories, mainly carbohydrate-based. I take one of those about every 20 to 25 minutes, and then I'll also be sipping an electrolyte fluid that has some mild, uh, it has a little bit of calories in it as well, carbohydrate-based. So taking in that pretty regularly, uh, maybe about 20 ounces per hour. Uh, and grabbing stuff from the aid stations too. A lot of it uh, depends on what you have at the aid stations in a race you're in. So at some point you're going to have to grab whatever they have, whatever they're serving uh, to top off your bottles or to just drink from cups uh, if they have something you could take. Uh, I've also taken bananas, potato chips in the past in longer races. I found for like the 100 mile races, 100 mile ultras, and even over 100K, I'll take in some solid food as well. Uh, but it's usually pretty carbohydrate based, even like a peanut butter jelly sandwich, potatoes, potato chips, uh, things like that. I've got some difficulty to, to eat during the race, so I can't eat uh, the whole food bar. So I cut it and I put it in, uh, in uh, papers of uh, sweet. And it's uh, convenient uh, after uh, to eat uh, without uh, having so much sugar on, on your fingers. I normally plan every 30 minutes to take something into me, uh, electrolytes or gels or a power bar, whatever my body is asking, and also changing a little bit with salt. Mm, I think that it's important to do it like uh, before one hour, so maybe every 45 minutes or like this. But then it depends on the race, how it's going, if you feel more tired or low energy you can change the program. <laughs> in, in the uphill, I don't think I will eat something in the downhill, only uphill. I do, do what I feel. I don't have like, I need to eat in that, in that minute. Like when, I'm, when I feel for it, I eat. So maybe like two gels in the uphill and then, yeah, finish the race and then eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I will take uh, three, three on, the for, on the first uphill. And then I will take one in the in the in the downhill if if or if I I'm really tired in the in the last part. But I will take uh, one half liter water with electrolytes, 
I will take uh, like uh, flectomine. It's a, a, a product that it's a electrolyte for the race, so it will be it will be nice to to take it during the the first uphill. During the race, uh, drink as much as your body asks for. And how do you feel when your body asks for? Is like you're getting dry uh, lips or you're getting dry eyes or it's like something that has to do with listening to your body. For me, one of the problems is gels are so sweet. And so you get to the point where you're just like saturated with sugar. So anything that's salty, I think also is really, is really great. And potatoes, and like putting potatoes in bags and like just having them or in your pockets. <laughs> or um, those little meat sticks. In Colombia, we eat a lot of this. It's called bocadillo. It's um, guava and it's you know cooked for a long time with a lot of sugar so it's kind of condensed into like something you can chew it's really delicious like at sears and all last weekend they definitely have like cheese and little candies and um stuff like that it's it's kind of i don't know you kind of look at it and you're like well i don't know if i would like that or not and i don't usually take it if it's a shorter race because i'm sticking to gels but um on a hundred mile race though i mean that stuff looks amazing and so usually you know, you're going slow enough, you can kind of digest some of that stuff. And so it's always worth kind of trying out. Um, but I highly recommend trying it out in training before doing it in a race. The longer the race, the more exotically I'll eat. I love trying all kinds of different stuff. Like, like I love the croissants, the chocolate croissants. They have these like mini chocolate croissants. And, you know, we don't, re I mean, you could probably find them in the U.S., but they're not around. Like in France, they're everywhere. And so I go crazy. And especially when I'm running 100 miles, I'm like, I need calories. These are awesome. Um, I'll eat those, but like when I've done the Hard Rock 100 mile, I'll make like bean and rice burritos with a little bit of cheese and cilantro in it and just eat on those. You know, it takes a while, but you're going up the hill, you just eat a burrito. Um, come into an aid station or have like Nutella in a tortilla, that's heavy, but it's, it's great, right? And then like maybe a third of the way into the race, I'll start like throwing in some bars, like Cliff Bars or Luna Bars. And then um, as I start to, you know, you get tired, you don't want to eat, you have to space it out. So it just becomes more efficient to eat the blocks and then the gels and so by like 75 80 miles i'm basically all on blocks and gels and because i haven't eaten them for the until then i'm not like overdone with sugar and so i was running the jungfrau marathon in switzerland a great race i'm going to do it again this year in three weeks actually but uh i accidentally grabbed a, a hot cup of chicken noodle soup i think it was about chicken chicken broth and i thought it was a, a like a gatorade a sports drink like an orange flavored cold sports drink and it was a shock because it was quite hot during the race and they I wanted to take in this cup of fluid really fast and it was hot uh, chicken broth. I'm also, since I'm vegetarian, it was kind of a shock too, uh, which is more, it's more common to have that in a, in a long ultra race, especially at night, uh, hot soup broth or something like that. But that was definitely a surprise. Uh, I've eaten chocolate a lot during some of the races in Europe as well. They have cubes of chocolate. They're very good. Um, and I've, I've grabbed all sorts of things. I accidentally grabbed a, a cheese and meat sandwich once too in France uh, at one of the aid stations. I thought it was just plain bread and it was filled with cheese and like ham. Uh, and that was a surprise as well. But they have different things at different races across the world. Afterwards, I just pretty much eat anything I want and, and as much as I can fit in my stomach. <laughs> I don't know, something something good, maybe like uh, ice cream. And then big yeah. meal, of course, like pizza or something is nice. Hawaii pizza is good. <laughs> After races, I often like to eat like rice and veggies. <laughs> yeah, and you grow a lot of your own food as well, yeah. don't you? What's in your garden at the moment? Oh, we have so much now, like uh, beets, uh, parsnip, rutabaga, potatoes, um, carrots, salad, kale, red cabbage. Uh, everything. That's amazing. What's your favorite meal to make from your garden? Oh, I love just like fresh boiled potatoes with olive oil and salt yeah. and like a fresh salad or um, uh, beetroots in the oven or like I'm feeling really good when I know that the, the food is is like prepared in a good way and like it comes from organic soil and everything um, but I guess it depends who you are but I for sure I think for the body it's really important to have like nutritious food and eat a lot of greens and also for the planet it's it's uh, important yeah after the race I'm like okay I can have whatever I want let's get ice cream burgers and pizza whatever um, but then I, I'm like I don't crave that stuff it's funny and I think it's probably because you eat so much sugar during the race you don't really want it right. I think I will try the American donuts and the American hamburgers, because <laughs> uh, before the race I, I have a healthy diet, but after the race I will try the common food here, so I will try 
some typical fruit from Americas. Part of what I'm thinking about, especially if I have a race coming up, is, is recovery. And so trying to get in something within 30 minutes with some carbo carbohydrates and some protein within 30 minutes, um, like a goo recovery or chocolate milk, something along those lines. Um, that is what I get in like immediately after the race. Um, and then after that, um, kind of a, a meal within about an hour or two hours after that is, is going to help with recovery as well. Um, and with that meal, like carbohydrates, fat, um, and protein in that is going gonna, is gonna to be beneficial for just helping to rebuild muscle, getting glycogen stores back up, um, and just general recovery and stuff. So, you know, and then obviously you have a beer after the race, of course. A cold beer on a hot day in Colorado, tastes, it tastes amazing. It depends on the logistics, so if you arrive and you are able to eat right now, it's better, of course, to recover faster, but sometimes it's not possible, sometimes your stomach is closed. And normally I'm not super hungry after a, a long race, but yeah, norm, it doesn't matter, so I'm not like, yeah, a pizza or no, depends. Oh, well, I, I do the alcohol thing a lot. I'm sponsored by Avery Brewing out of Boulder, Colorado, so uh, I brought a lot of Avery for this race. I, I will drink, I'll indulge quite a bit after the race, uh, either drinking to celebrate or drinking because I'm disappointed, but there'll be some drinking involved. Yeah, everything in moderation though. It's, uh, it's a balance definitely with hard workouts and training and you want to recover. Uh, so you definitely try to stay hydrated with water and sports drinks and, and a lot of juice, but I love beer, I love desserts, uh, I love pizza, I love uh, pancakes and, and cake and uh, all sorts of desserts. So I'll definitely indulge extra for a day or two after the race before I get back to the drawing board. <laughs> Big fat burrito. <laughs> oh no, I'm not going near any <laughs> Um My go-to, everybody knows, it's it's mac and cheese. I always have mac and cheese. Toast with uh, peanut butter, honey, OJ, something like that. Maybe a banana. Yeah, banana. Uh, I do oatmeal. That's always my go-to. And like during the race, I know the Salomon athletes, they're just going to take gels and stuff. Are you, what are you going to do during oh, no, the race? Real food. Fuel? Real food. I yeah. like the little mini pretzels and peanut butter. It gets you all your carbs, sodium. Pickle juice we'll have out there. Um, might have some... What's pickle juice? juice? Pickle juice helps oh, with cramping. cramping. Oh, it's like, right. I've not heard of yeah. pickle juice. Oh, Tell me yeah. more. Oh, yeah. That and uh, mustard packets. People do that, too. What is mustard packets? Tell it's me about this. Mustard. Just, just mustard. Just That's mustard packets that you can get at any... What, like food. that you get at a burger joint? Yes. Yeah. Wow. And what, you just neck it? Or yeah. do you put it on something? No, you, you just, just eat suck mustard. It down. Really? It helps I'm, with cramping. Oh, I've never heard of this before. Is yeah. this an American thing or is this a you guys thing? No, it's an Ameri American thing. American thing. We have a pickle jar. Up here, they have pickles Pinica. here. Yeah. And we'll just spoon it out into a little cup when we've been training and just take a shot. Yeah. Most of the people that we know, um, they'll carry like a little uh, flask. You know, one of them will squeeze things that you would normally put like goo in and they'll just put pickle juice in it and just take a shot. Wow. Yeah. Pickle juice is also good with uh, Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you guys going to party after the race? Pickle juice and Jameson. <laughs> pickle juice.